Well, praise the Lord. Good evening once again. We welcome you again to this special Bible study discussion on the new birth and the Christian walk. Um, last time we, we, we shared on the necessity of the new birth. And I think if you missed it, you can, you can always go back and check um, or the, the website for the first uh, session on the, the new birth and the necessity of the new birth. Today we want to continue our, our study and I'm, I, I hope you have your Bibles already and your, your notepads because we are, we are talking today about the evidence of the new birth, the evidence of the new birth. There are many persons who claim that they are Christians, who claim that they are born again, but their lifestyle, the way they speak, the way they relate, their attitude, does not reflect that they have experienced the transforming power of Almighty God. In fact, the Bible declares that if any man be in Christ, they are a new creature, new person. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so it is necessary that persons who claim that they are born again to demonstrate the evidence of the new birth. Now, when we spoke to the necessity of the new birth, one of the critical points we sought to establish is that the new birth is experienced through repentance. And repentance means turning around, a change of heart, a change of mind, and allowing the Holy Spirit to change you from inside out. Now, the concept then of repentance is introduced by John in Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, where John called for the fruit of repentance. So if there is going to be evidence of a new birth, it must be accompanied by the fruit of repentance. John says, the Bible declares when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit, reflecting or meat for repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. And so it is necessary that those who are born again demonstrate by their fruit that they have repented of their sins and they have experienced the new birth. Now, I have heard persons who have said, you know, I want to become a Christian, but I don't want to backslide. And they use that as an excuse not to commit their life to Christ. Oh, I want to become a Christian, but there are too many hypocrites in the church. Or when I am ready, I will come to God. Well, you know, I'm trying to live this Christian life. Well, when you think in terms of the evidence of being born again, there is the fruit of repentance, but there is the function of grace. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 13 these are important verses because it says the grace of God that brings salvation appeared to all men. So we are saved by grace. We're not saved by works. We're not saved by our good deed. But grace does not only save the person. Grace, after you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Grace takes on the role of a tutor. Grace takes on the role of a teacher. So you're not left alone to live the Christian life. So what Titus says is that this grace that brings salvation now teaches us how to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts so we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So many persons are saying it is so impossible to live the Christian life in this wicked and ungodly world. And I will agree with you 
except that if you try to live the Christian life after you are born again by your own self-efforts, you will fail miserably. It is the function of grace to teach us how to deny ungodliness. It is the function of grace to teach us how to live soberly and righteously in this present evil world. And so, what God does, when you submit yourself to his teaching grace, he who has redeemed us from our iniquities and sin will then cleanse us and purify us to be a peculiar people, zealous for good works. We then could consider, are there features of this new birth? And there may be several, but I want to focus on at least 11 um, evidence of the new birth taken from John Piper's Finally Alive. Those who are born again, they keep the commandments of Almighty God. Now, prior to being born from above, we do good works and we try. But when you receive the Spirit of God into your heart, you have now the power of the Holy Spirit to live of how God requires you to live. In fact, in 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, But this we know, that we have come to know Him. If we keep His commandments, the one who says, I have come to know Him, and does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So it is inconceivable to say that I have come to know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and be living a disobedient life, because the one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he, Jesus, would take up his abode with you, and he gives you the Holy Spirit. Here's a second evidence of a person who is born again. Those who are born of God walk as Christ walked. The Bible declares in 1 John 2, verses 5 and 6, that whosoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought also to walk in the same manner as he walked. Now, certainly, it is not speaking about wearing a white gown, wearing a bed, wearing a sandals, wearing or carrying a rod and staff. Walking as Jesus walked have to do with the manner of lifestyle. And so what John teaches us is this, as an evidence of a person who is born again, if you abide in him, you now walk or follow the pattern of Jesus' lifestyle. Here's a third evidence or indicator that a person is born again. The Bible declares, those who are born of God do not hate other believers, but love them. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother, John says in 1 John 2, 9, he is still in darkness until now. You see, it is inconceivable to be a hater, as the youth would say, and still be a Christian and still be walking in light. The person who is born again, the Bible is clear that we have been passed we know that we've passed from death to life because we love the brethren. And he who does not love abides in death in 1 John 3 and verse 14. In fact, the command of 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And whosoever loves is born of God. And anyone who does not love does not know God. Now, I know that word love has been thrown around in all form and in all fashion. And for some people, love means you must do whatever I want, whatever I desire. And if you don't, you don't love me. 
The truth about it, love is qualified in the book of Philippians when Paul says, I pray that your love will grow more and more in knowledge and discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent. So true love is not demonstrated with pampering people's needs per se. True love is not always saying yes to the whims and fancy. As a parent, you may have to say no to a child because you love them. So when the Bible says, let us love one another, that love is not measured by human standards. It's a love that's demonstrated by Almighty God. And that love is shed abroad in our hearts as an evidence of being born again. Number four, evidence. Those who are born of God do not love the world. 1 John 2 and verse 15 says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now the world there is not to be taken as the birds and the trees and the mountains and the beautiful nature that God has created. World there represents actually the system of rebellion flowing from man that rejects the rulership of God in their life. It is the spirit of disobedience that have gone out into the world. It's a spirit of corruption. It's a spirit of revelry. In fact, when the Bible says, love not the world, we are speaking here of the spirit of the world that rejects God. Number five, those who are born of God confess the Son and have received Jesus as Lord. The Bible declares in John chapter 2 and verse 23, whosoever denies the Son does not have the Father. And the one who confesses the Son has the Father also. There are many people, they try to come around the person of Jesus. Some take the person of Jesus and demote him to an angel. Some take the person of Jesus and demote him to a mere secretary. The Bible is clear that if you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. And so the person who is born again have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they understand that Jesus, the Son of the living God, is God's mediator between God and man. And so you receive the Son, you receive the Father, because you cannot come to God except you go through the sun. We will take a short break and then we'll come back to look at the evidence of being born again. We have covered five so far. We will now cover the remaining as we return. Welcome back. We have been talking about the evidence of being born again. And we were looking at 11 um, 
pure biblical indicators of a person who is born again. Because we live in a time where the boundaries are blurred and you're not sure who is born again and who is a Christian or not. Number six, the Bible is clear that those who are born again do not make a habitual practice of sin. Those who are born of God practice righteousness. In 1 John 2 and verse 29, if you can check the Bible, it says, If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Now, this righteousness is not self-righteousness. It is the life of living that is in alignment with what God requires. So the born-again person practices righteousness because he's born of Almighty God. Number seven. Now, this is an important one among the others. Uh, once you are born again, sin cannot be a habitual practice. No one who abides in his sins and no one who sins have seen God or know God, according to John 3, 6. Now, the born-again person is not perfect. They will blunder, they will make mistakes, and they may even sin from time to time. But the Bible says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So a true born-again believer cannot be abiding in sin, practicing sin, feeling comfortable in sin, and claim to know God and claim to be abiding with God. Number eight, those who are born of God, they now possess the Spirit of God living within. 1 John 3 and verse 24 is pretty clear to us. It says, the one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. We know by this he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given to us. When a, person's accept, a person accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the born-again experience means that the Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence in a person's life. And by abiding in the person, by this we know that we are children of God and the Spirit that you receive. Here's what the Bible calls that Spirit. It is the spirit of adoption. God has adopted you into his family. And the sign and seal of his adoption is the spirit of God coming and taking up residence within the individual. So how do we know you are born again? The spirit of God takes up residence within you. And by this we know we abide in him because he has given us his spirit in John 4 and verse 13. What then could we explore? Where again can we explore? What evidence do you have that you are born again? One of the clear signs, number nine, those who are born of God would listen submissively to the word of Almighty God. Now, I have discovered that prior to knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, the Bible could be a very boring book. The Bible lacks excitement. It is, a fact, it is in fact a book that some people avoid or they just go through the religious routine of reading. However, once you have accepted Jesus Christ and you have experienced a new birth, 1 John 4, 6 says, We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. And he who is not from God does not listen to us. 
By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Whatever the word of God is taught, whatever the word of God is preached, those who know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, there's a natural gravitation to the word of God. There's a natural gravitation to submission, listening, and obedience to the word of Almighty God. Number 10, those who are born of God believe that Jesus is the Christ. Now, while we say Jesus Christ, it is really Jesus the Christ. Christ is a, is a title which simply means Messiah or the Anointed One. So when we say Jesus the Christ, we're saying Jesus is the Anointed Messiah. So those who have accepted the new birth, they will testify that Jesus of Nazareth, he is the anointed Messiah or the anointed one of God. 1 John 5, 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ have been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whosoever been born of him. There are those who claim that they love Jesus as a good moral teacher, as a good religious example, but they do not embrace Jesus as the Messiah, the anointed of God. That is a clear indicator whether that person is born of God. Let's read over 1 John 5, 1. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ have been born of Almighty God. And finally, number 11, those who are born of God, God gives them the capacity and the ability to overcome the world or the systems of the world. Here's what 1 John 5, 4 says. For everyone who has been born of God, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. When we see persons struggling with their allegiance to God or their allegiance to the world, it creates a serious question whether Jesus is Lord over their life. Now, I've heard persons say the Christian life is so difficult, it is so hard, and oftentimes it betrays the sense that people are trying to live this life on their own strength, on their own ability. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and following, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heaven laden, and take upon me your yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Any religion that brings you into bondage like a yoke is not the religion of God. Any religion that have you dabbling and struggling with the things of the world is not the religion of God. There's this old song that people used to sing, Satan is on my back. No, Satan is not on my back. The Bible is clear. Everyone who is born of God, they overcome the world. Friends, families, well-wishers, anything that is contrary to the spirit of the living God, God gives you the power to overcome the world. And this is the victory. How do you get the victory? You overcome the world through your faith, not by good works. We are so glad that you've tuned in to this second deposit, speaking about the born-again experience and the Christian life. And this evening, we simply try to express very clearly from the Word of God that if you are born again, you must demonstrate by your fruit that you have repented of your sins. Tonight, this evening, wherever you are, we want to pray 
that God will help you to live this Christian life as you submit to him. Dear God, I pray for every new believer tonight or even those who have been walking with you but they are struggling in their Christian life. We are seeking to walk a life in the spirit through the works of the flesh. And so we ask you that we would understand that when we repent of sin, that there would be the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit in our life as we overcome the world. Thank you again for this life of victory, life of victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Next week, we will again come to you to continue this important discussion on what it means to be born again and what it means to be a Christian. God bless you. <music>